So it's that time of year again, a time to take a moment to reflect on the best of the last year. In this video, I'm going to be looking at the top 10 mods to come out for Fallout 4 in 2021. And this is a unique one for a couple of reasons. Some mods on this list were highly anticipated. We saw teasers for them for literally years before they actually did release and come out. Some other ones are contenders, not only for the best mod of 2021, but some of the best mods ever to come to Fallout 4. And perhaps most importantly, there's a few surprises mixed in. You could not predict everything I put on this list as this is my personal opinion. My favorite 10 mods of 2021, not the most downloaded, not the most endorsed, just what I thought were the best and adding the most to this game. And I even have a few honorable mentions mixed in throughout. With that said though, let's start off with what I think could perhaps be one of the most obvious inclusions on this list, and that is Fallout 4 HD Overhaul. Since Fallout 4 released, Luxor has been releasing HD upgrades for various components of this game, whether it be the landscape, some of the actual objects in the world, ranging from things you see all the time to completely miscellaneous, and the HD overhaul is really the culmination of all of that work. As the title suggests, what this is going to do is basically retexture all of Fallout 4 and all of its DLCs. In many ways, it does feel like this is several years of work all bundled into one, not one download, because the file sizes for this are massive, but really one comprehensive package that we're going to be paying attention to for a while. Fallout 4 honestly holds up pretty well, but one of the things that do start to fall short are the textures, and this is a huge upgrade on that. And even further, as we get down the road, as we are inevitably modding Fallout 4 five years in the future, this is going to be that mod you continue to download. It's really one of the only options of its type, and it's the definitive one. If you want to make your Fallout 4 look better, you need the Fallout 4 HD overhaul. You might install other smaller scale overhauls over top this that are more specified or editing things in a more unique way, but this is going to be your base coat, the base layer that you want to download and install, and it's going to stay like that for a long time. It's really one of those mods that you download now and are probably going to keep in the background for the long haul as long as you actually have the hard drive space. In a somewhat similar vein, we then have Mutant Menagerie, which I'm probably mispronouncing, but that's okay. As this too is an overhaul of Fallout 4's Commonwealth, but in a very different way. What this is going to do is add in a whole wealth of new creatures into Fallout 4. Many of these not being literally lore friendly in that they didn't necessarily appear in other Fallout games, but just are generally lore friendly in that they fit into this world. They don't feel out of place most of the time. Sometimes they have odd or wacky themes that feel very Fallout like Bethesda definitely could have created these things. And even further, it does have the added benefit of integrating a bunch of the DLC creatures into the Commonwealth, so those will naturally spawn also. And really, the big reason that I think this is one of the best mods of 2021 is there's very few mods that actually do this, and it's an extremely effective method at actually making the Commonwealth feel more lively and unique on a modded playthrough. If you're watching this video, you have probably played Fallout 4. You've probably played Fallout 4 more than once. You've encountered the same bugs just outside side of Red Rocket or the feral dogs that you see running around hundreds of times at this point. Actually having something novel and unique there is a pretty rare thing in the modding scene, and this is one of the biggest packs that does it while still remaining lore friendly. These creatures are dynamically added into the world, so you're just going to start finding them as you explore around. New and familiar faces now popping up in the commonwealth. And there's a wide variety, from incredibly forgettable features that you're like, wait, is that a mod or am I just forgetting one of the DLC creatures, to things that completely stand out as unique and interesting. But don't stand out too much, as everything in this does feel very Fallout. And if this mod was only that, it would probably still be on this list, but it actually does take things a step further, as it also does have a really good implementation of actually giving you crafting recipes around many of these creatures. So you can take what you get off of them and craft new and unique items in the game, and it actually makes hunting a somewhat viable playstyle in this game, something you might focus on doing, especially on a hardcore survival run. Overall, it's a phenomenal mod for this game, another one that I pretty much always keep in the background now, just like the Fallout 4 HD overhaul, because I really enjoy the upgrades it makes to this world, and it even has a bunch of patches if you want to tweak some things. But then we have what is definitely the simplest mod on this list, that with Tactical Reload. This does one thing, it makes it so 
So if you are reloading a weapon that still has bullets in the magazine, it'll play a slightly different animation than if you had no bullets in the magazine, aka if you finish firing all you can versus if you reload early, you'll get two different animations. It is really, really simple. The reason I'm including it in this video, despite its simplicity is, well, you spend a lot of time looking at reloads in Fallout 4. And this is one of those super small, but super nice features that have become a staple of many of the modern weapon mods to come out for this game, which is pretty rare for a game that is five, six years old to get a new standard implemented this far into its lifespan. And it's definitely nice it's for immersion purposes, just in general, people enjoy this kind of stuff. But if you are looking for combat to be enhanced in a more broad way in Fallout 4, we also do have combined arms and the combined arms expansion pack. Yes, these are occupying two spots on this list. And no, I honestly don't feel bad about it because I would say either of these, even if it was an expansion pack, just a standalone mod would have made this list. Is it in fact what these are, are weapon packs for Fallout 4. And honestly, that is incredibly rare. I don't know the exact numbers, but there are probably hundreds, if not thousands of standalone weapon mods, all being incredibly high quality. And they're probably under 10 full-fledged weapon packs. But even further, one of the big reasons combined arms does stand out is not only are these just new weapons added to the game, but they are detailed. They have a breadth of customization options that actually give you unique and different variants of these weapons. So though these mods add in 17 new weapons into the game, it really feels like a lot more than that because once you dive into that customization, you could really make it a lot more than that. And really at its core, the reason this makes it as the best weapon mod to come out this year is it's basically just like downloading a weapon mod except times 17 and it's still only going to be two files you download. There's no skimping here. For all of the various 17 weapons added, they are just as high quality as a standalone weapon mod and many of these could have been standalone weapon mods and would have been amazing popular, but as a pack, it really is bar none. It's one of the best weapon mod options you have. Because as we get into Fallout 4 modding, a lot of times you end up downloading 40 different weapon mods and it's not really fun. I don't enjoy that. I enjoy downloading two files and having 17 new weapons integrated into the level list of my game. They are modern weapons, which isn't going to be for everyone, but obviously that's a huge thing in Fallout 4 modding. But even despite that, they still have a lot of pretty cool implementation into Fallout 4. Whether it be the more unique choices you have have when it comes to picking what bullets they will fire, or the fact that it actually does do a good job at taking advantage of perks, something a lot of other weapon mods don't do. Getting to Gun Nut 4 won't give you every customization option with this pack, which I really like. It actually feels like thought was put into this. So overall, if I had to download one weapon mod for Fallout 4, it would definitely be combined arms. And then the expansion pack, because you aren't actually just restricted to one weapon mod at a time. So we have an interesting one with Fallout 4 photo mode. A teaser image of this one was shown just shortly after Fallout 76's release. People were waiting for years for this to finally come out, but in February of 2021, it did, offering a wealth of options as far as how you can take pictures in Fallout 4, giving you functionality that no other mod brought to the table and you really couldn't achieve otherwise. You could get some things with console commands, but overall, if you want to take pictures of Fallout 4, and lots of people do, this is a must download for that, as it really does have so many cool and unique options around it, like even just moving around your character or what they're doing in game to get that perfect shot and get the positioning just right. Now, I'm not a big photographer. I don't take a lot of pictures in Fallout 4, so I'm not a big user of this mod, but it's one of those things that creates more content to consume. Lots of other people with far more talent have used this and created some really awesome things, so it definitely deserves a spot on this list. On one hand, because of how anticipated it was, but also it is basically a fully fledged photo mode, more feature rich than some photo photo modes that launch with other AAA games. Then we have one that may be kind of surprising to some of you because it's actually one of the least downloaded mods in this entire video. That with power armor to the people. This is a relatively simple mod in that what it's going to do is take a bunch of the other power armor mods to already come out and implement them into the level list of NPCs in Fallout 4. So now you might find raiders wearing modded power armor, which just wasn't a thing before. And that's why I love this mod. There was an era with Fallout 4 modding, especially in the earlier days where power armor mods were kind of the pinnacle mods. Those were the best new releases, and over time, it seems like weapon mods and even some other categories have eclipsed that. We actually rarely get power armor mods these days, but we have a giant backlog of incredibly high quality and high detailed power armor mods 
many of which are lore friendly, and this mod will actually give you a use for them. A problem I had was I don't really like using power armor in the modern Fallout games, but I still really liked and admired those other high quality power armor mods, but I didn't really have a use for them because I'm not going to be wearing that armor. They're not implemented into the level list most of the time. This fixes that while also making the enemies you encounter just look really freaking cool and even have a few unique variants scattered throughout the world. It does a really good job at making some of those enemy encounters much more memorable because now you're going to have someone storming out in a high tier power armor that you may not be used to seeing because this isn't really a thing that happened before. And even further, it actually does have some functionality of implementing legendary power armor that is very rare and hard to get, which does feel right at home in Fallout 4 as it is already a feature in Fallout 76. Then we do have Fall UI HUD. This is another one of those mods that as soon as this came out, I knew, okay, this is going to be one of the best mods to ever come out for Fallout 4. It's going to be a staple for some people to download. It's basically what this does is give you a full set of customization options for your HUD. You could basically change everything for your HUD. Do you want no HUD? You could do that. Do you want certain aspects of your HUD to look bigger, smaller, or just outright different? You could do that. You could change the color. You could just move the position of certain things. And this is all really easy to follow and use things to the in-game UI that does ship with this one. And what makes it 10 times better because I'm lazy and I know many of you are lazy, you could download presets for this mod. So even if you don't want to spend all this time actually customizing your HUD, you could just download a bunch of presets and have the other people do the work for you and use whatever they intended for your HUD, which is great and a huge addition to Fallout 4 that I absolutely love. Plus, obviously with your HUD, you're seeing it all the time as you play this game, or you're not seeing it all the time as you play this game, depending on which avenue you want to go down but this gives you the tools to actually choose. One of the big issues I've always had with Fallout 4 was it felt like it relied too heavily on the settlement system for cities, and as such, it didn't really have many cities. There's really just Diamond City. Obviously, there's also things like Good Neighbor and Bunker Hill, but the city aspect and the living quarters aspect just didn't feel as good as other games, especially Fallout 3. Hunker Down is going to somewhat fix that, as what this is going to do is give some of the locations in Fallout 4, and actually quite a large handful at this point, an upgrade, so it looks like people actually lived in those locations. So it'll implement things like living quarters, more details overall. It actually has some immersion components to it, like some of the fires that were just on even though nobody was around will no longer actually be there. And this is probably going to be somewhat subjective, but I just like the overall design of this one, its core ideology with how it upgrades and overhauls Fallout Forest Commonwealth. There's a bunch of mods that add in new and additional things, but I liked how this one targeted specific areas and made it seem a bit more fleshed out and lived in, more practical overall. So before we get into the final mod, what I think is the best mod to come out for Fallout 4 in 2021, I do have a couple of honorable mentions that I do want to shout out. Things that I liked but didn't quite make the top 10, at least for me. The makeshift shotgun and improvised grenade launcher was one of my favorite weapon mods of this year. Really just because it's cool, it's basically going to be a very simple pipe-based shotgun or grenade launcher and feels right at home in Fallout. It's pretty rare now that we actually get some of these makeshift or almost lore-friendly-esque mods, and this is a phenomenal one. The Capital Wasteland Robot Pack probably would have been number 11 on this list if I added one more mod, but it adds in a bunch of additional robot customization options into Fallout 4, but the best version is you actually do have full-on Securitrons that you can customize and edit as a follower, and that's just cool. It's just really high quality, extremely well done, and a ton of fun, partially because of that nostalgia, but just also Securitrons are awesome. The Commonwealth Responders was another one that probably would have been number 12. It's going to be a Fallout 4 based quest mod that do have their responders popping back up. I love these types of things thematically actually taking that lore from other Fallout games, notably Fallout 76, and implementing it into Fallout 4. It's a ton of fun. If you haven't played it, I highly recommend it. And again, it really has a soft spot for me because I love the use of the responder storyline and seeing them kind of get established in this area because that probably would have happened. Project Mojave, do I even really need to explain on this one? I wouldn't be surprised if some people are shocked to not find it on the list, but the reason I don't actually include it in the top 10 is because it's not done. It's like a partially complete Fallout New Vegas world space. It's really cool, but it doesn't really feel appropriate including something that's only part done in a top 10 list of mods. But if you don't know, this basically adds in a subset of Fallout New Vegas's world space, including a ton of new buildable objects, creatures, weapons, etc. for you to explore. It's awesome, and actually exploring around the initial area here, seeing some of those updated locations is something I highly recommend you try. S-Rep Redux is the Service Rifle Expansion Project 
Abstract Redux. It is probably one of the best weapon mods for Fallout 4, and it would have made this video, but it came out in 2020. Yeah, like I said earlier in this video, I didn't actually make a top 10 list for 2020, but this mod was so good that I wanted to give it an honorable mention in the 2021 video. Anyway, if you haven't downloaded this, please do. It is incredibly high quality, and it really turns the service rifle into one of the most versatile weapon mods in Fallout 4. But then to end this video off, we have what is probably one of the least surprising entries on this video overall, and that is Sim Settlements 2 Chapter 2. What was easily and by far the best mod to come out for Fallout 4 in 2021, getting in just at the end in December. And this mod's awesome because it has this really well done marriage of new gameplay features, but then also new story and quest components to keep you occupied over the long haul. It does have this extremely well-written story that implements the Gunners as an enemy faction in Fallout 4, something that the game desperately needed. The Gunners needed more purpose, and just from a lore perspective, I'm happy this exists, and I'm sure for a lot of people it feels canon because of how well done it is. The quality here is immense. It is probably the highest quality quest mod from a voice acting and technical perspective that we've really ever gotten. And even beyond the main quest, some of these secondary and side quests are immensely interesting and quite well fleshed out. These aren't short quests, but they give you a lot of different things to try and experience in Fallout 4. There's hours upon hours of new content. Even just from a content perspective, the amount of new stuff this adds in is going to occupy you for a long time, probably more than anything else in this video. And on the feature side, it gives you new and additional ways to manage your settlements in game. It actually repopulates the commonwealth, so it feels like you building settlements has a purpose. You'll find new locations occupied by new people, get to hear their more personal stories, as well as just some of the general upgrades to settlements and settlement management overall, and just in general, it's phenomenal. If you haven't played this one, I highly recommend doing so. On release, it did have some bugs, but even with those bugs, it was great, but thankfully over time now and hotfixes, many of those bugs are gone. Sim Settlements 2 in general is probably the best mod ever to come out for Fallout 4, the second best mods being the Chapter 2 to Sim Settlements 2, and if you want to have a blast one weekend, I recommend downloading both chapter one or the original and chapter two and you're just gonna have a great time and you could probably download a bunch of the other mods in this video and have an even better time plus it's available on xbox which definitely scores at some major brownie points with me but overall that's gonna wrap up this one those are my top 10 mods for fallout 4 in 2021 a bit later than i wanted this video to be out but hopefully you found this enjoyable perhaps i gave you a couple of ideas as far as mods you will want to download this definitely had more variation of some lesser known things popped in that maybe you just had never heard of. With that said though, as always again, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you all next time. Later.